Live from the Acres Broadcast Center inside East Stadium, this is the Husker Athletic Director Show with Trev Alberts. Lawrence on the other end lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams. Into the hands of Lawrence. The baseball pass and the jab. The jam by Gary on the other end. She will reset with 12 on the shot clock. Once the screen gets it from Markowski. To the right elbow, back out top. Markowski will shoot a three. You betcha. Ties the game. A three-pointer by Markowski off the assist from Hayes. Lawrence with the ball. Cross court, mid court. Tomonaga shoots up a 30-footer. Got it. Bang, bang, a ring. Tomonaga with a three. Goes off the bounce. Goes behind your back. Works foul line. Pots for three. Top of the key. You betcha. Natalie Potts, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week with a triple. Oscar's ball, high right side. Mast shoots up another three. Got it! He's three for three. Rink Mast. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. And it's time for us to have our monthly sit-down with Nebraska Athletic Director Trev Alberts. We'll talk all things Husker Athletics. If you want to be a part of the program, 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Good to see you. Happy Holidays. And it's kind of quiet around the stadium today. All the students are gone. Yeah, it's a little bit different, isn't it? You know, it uh, man, time just flies. Here we, we're sitting, getting ready to celebrate Christmas and the holiday season, which uh, will be fantastic. Get a chance to be with our family again. But uh, uh, been a lot going on this fall. Oh, yeah. And I will say, you know, what, what a fantastic fall to be a Husker fan, to, to get to work in an athletic department, to see how our coaches and student athletes have competed. Pretty, amazing, pretty remarkable and amazing. You just got back from Tampa. You were down there yeah. for that amazing run that, that did not end the way any of us wanted it to, but I hope it doesn't take away from people's yeah. enjoyment of that um, wonderful journey that team took us on. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, in, in the heat of the moment, in the disappointment of, quote, not winning. Um, but I just hope that uh, everybody gets a chance eventually, and, and we will, uh, to really reflect on how special the season this was. And You know, as I sat down and I looked around that stadium to see all the red, the commitment of our fans, and, you know, it's just really remarkable. I think this year in volleyball, over 250,000 people came to support our volleyball program. It's the highest total attendance and support of any women's athletics program in Cornhusker history. So I'm just so grateful to all of our fans. I'm grateful to Coach Cook. I mean, I obviously wasn't here during his whole journey as a head coach, Greg, but this has to be among his best coaching jobs he's ever done. I mean, he was the national coach of the year for a reason, but you look at that team and the culture he built, a uh, young team, um, what an amazing season. To start the year, you know, volleyball day in Nebraska, to end it down in Tampa, uh, I won't soon forget this season. It was really fun. Amazing year for them, and you were down there, a lot of, like you said, a lot of red, including one of Nebraska football's greatest names, and Dominican Sue was sitting right behind you. You get a chance to talk to the big fella. I did, yeah. You know, and Dominican and I, we've connected a little bit, and, you know, he's got a lot of different things going on. He's getting to the point, I'm not sure yet when it will be, but as he's thinking about life post playing in the National Football League and what that looks like, he's got um, some ideas, he's got some things. I, I think he's going to be involved some way, somehow, in Husker Athletics. I want to get people like Endomic and Sue. You know, I thought about Will Shields. I mean, there, there, there's former players that have so much to give, and we got to think about how we can better engage with them to help. And, and uh, so he's got some ideas in, in the NIL space and some of those emerging things that perhaps can help some of our student athletes. But it was great to see, you know, uh, and Dominic and Sue. There were other former players there. Kenny Bell, Fabian Washington showed up. We had, we had just lots of people that wanted to be a part of something really special. And to have it be one of our women's programs, I thought was uh, – you know, sort of the icing on the cake. So, yeah, didn't didn't end the way that we wanted it to. Uh, but I'll tell you what, you got to be really proud of of those young ladies. Fantastic, well, fantastic season for all of that. And that, that question came from one of our our viewers in our chat room. We wanted to ask you about Indama and Sue being down there. It's been a tomorrow is a huge day. Tomorrow is National Signing Day, part one, because they still have the one in February. But this has become the big one now. Your staff has really been beating the bushes. They've been all over this country for the last couple of weeks. I know you're proud of their efforts. Yeah, I, I, can't, I just can't say enough about what Coach Rule and his staff have done. Remember, you know, first of all, I was just thinking, aren't, aren't we glad we have the early signing date now? I mean, remember there was a lot of consternation about, well, do we really need an either? I can't imagine if right now we were waiting till February. Right. So it's, it's great to get the early signing date done. And, um, I, again, I – You know, we talked about this when we hired Coach Rule, right? We were really looking for a leader who had the understanding and the the ability to create the apparatus around football. So, you you know, obviously the full-time assistant coaches are really, really important. But 
just like our staff, there's all kinds of people associated with football, names that probably many Husker fans have no idea who they are, but just their organizational structure, their work, these things don't just happen, right? Like you don't get some of the players that are coming to Nebraska that just show up. It just doesn't happen, especially when you look at what's happened the last seven years and how long it's been to we've been to a bowl game. And so to have the kind of success they've had, I think it just starts with number one, just good old fashioned hard work. Um, they have worked extraordinarily hard. And then to have a, a strategic vision around how they were gonna approach it, I thought was really, really good. So I'm really excited for them. I'm excited for our football program. And I think there's just, you can sort of feel a little bit of energy and tangible momentum. Uh, obviously it's, you gotta be a little bit careful. I mean, we, we don't need to put a bunch of pressure <laughs> on young people that have never had a, a chance to be at this level. But well, I'll tell you what, um, you know, acquisition and retention of talent are really, really important in, in athletics, and especially in college football. I'll tell you, I also was just extraordinarily impressed with, you know, as you think about the transfer portal and all of the chaos, our chaos has been pretty limited. And I really think that speaks to the culture that Coach Rule and his coaches have built. Young men want to be a part of our football program, and that's pretty cool. You mentioned you like, you're a fan of the early signing period. This has become a very busy time now in college football, the portal, the signing period. <laughs> And next year, we're adding the playoff into it. And so are you concerned that we're putting too much in a short period of time? Do we need to look at moving some things around? What, what are your thoughts on well, that? Well, it's a really good question. And, and, yeah, I'm concerned about a lot of things. In fact, you know, we – so I'm on the Football Oversight Committee, and, and there's now two. There's an FBS Football Oversight Committee and an FCS one. And it sort of came up in our last meeting. It, it's time for us to take a holistic vision of our game and review. Like – as you think about it, I, I watch some of our coaches, right? Like, I watch Coach Rule. And, you know, what we're asking some of our coaches, and nobody feels sorry for the coaches because they'll read about certain things, but the reality is what we're asking them to do, the pace at which they're going, really is, is not sustainable. So, so we're going to take a holistic look at, at our game, and, and that's got to include everything. Like, you know, how we approach things is so different from conference to conference. As you look at even small things like uniforms and right. the way some people, how are our games officiated? How quickly do we place the ball? The, the, I think it's a good chance to take a step back, look at the recruiting calendar. You know, we've made some tweaks and changes to that, but, but how does that interface, you know, in the totality of how our game is presented, right? Like even things like in fan experience in our games. You know, as you think about the disruption in terms of timeouts and the length between them, how do we make sure that, that our game is presented in the best possible way that's as clean, as efficient, and most importantly, that's consistent, consistently applied? How, how are we looking at, re, you know, replay and review? And, and how are those applied from conference to conference? And, and how do we look at, you know, so I, I think the more that we can bring consistency to our game, um, and eliminate some of the, you know, different approaches. And I, and I don't, we certainly don't want to present a picture that our game is broken. I mean, college football has never been more popular. So in spite of, you know, significant angst around how all this stuff works and, oh, my goodness, um, our game is strong. But I think we have a chance to, to really look at it and really enhance it even further. So it'll be interesting to see, um, and, and that's, you know, that, that's a, a feeling that's shared by a lot of my colleagues is that, you know, is there a way that we can make it even better? So to your point, I, I do. I think, it's a, I think it's a fair point that we need to take a step back and look at everything. Well, with the playoff expanding to 12 next year, we might be a part of it. No, no. no I'm right. not making predictions. But to be trying to get prepared a team to play in a playoff game and yet have to be recruiting, that's a lot to ask. I don't know how you humanly – there's not enough hours in the day. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I totally agree with you. And, and yet, um, you know, you find a way. And so yeah. I, I think some, some of the silver lining, you could ask yourself, well, you know, we didn't make a bowl game again this year. As you were trying to build the program and coach rule, I'm, I mean, I, I think having the time and the total focus on recruiting, could we have had some benefit from extra practices? Of course. Yeah. But I think having the full focus on making sure this 24 class is, is uh, fantastic, I, I, I think kind of works out for us in the long run. Very good. Uh, ticket renewals for football. We're already starting to look at the 24 season coming up. Talk about that pricing. What's what's going to be different? Maybe saves the same. What's what's all that? Yeah. So the pricing won't change. Obviously, last year we reduced it by a hundred dollars because so it'll go back to the the normal pricing. And and I just want to be you know clear there there isn't going to be any disruption in the 24 season relative to the stadium modernization plan. But 
But I do encourage fans, those that are in South Stadium, I mean, we do have the seat yourself. There's some options in other parts of the stadium if there's some concern there in terms of eventually when we have some of that disruption. Uh, but we're really looking forward. Uh, obviously, we're excited. We've announced a spring game. Uh, we've got recruiting tomorrow. Um, uh, just, just excited about the future of Husker football. And um, so we'll do everything we can to make sure that we're as uh, cognizant of what we ask our fans to do as we possibly can. Very good. Last weekend was the end of the fall semester. You had some graduations. And there were, I think, 30-some, 30 33 graduates uh, from Husker. And that's what it's about, right? Get these students in, get them that diploma at yeah. the end of their college days. You know, it's one of the things, Greg, that I, I'm really glad that you, you always bring this up and you ask me about these questions because it is important. You know, obviously we're trying to win. But at the end of the day, as Dennis LeBlanc reminded the executive staff again this morning, is we have a, a responsibility to deliver on graduation. These are young people that, of course, we're trying to win championships. And we talk about Tampa and volleyball. They need an education. This is about a, this is a life's decision, not this window of three to five years. And so, you know, it, one of the things that we do that I, I, really, I really enjoy is after graduation, all the student athletes and their parents, we go over to West Stadium, we have a little celebration and Keith and Dennis and their teams and everybody's presented with a ring and they get a pad folio and, Part of our commitment to them is it doesn't end just when you graduate here. It's, you know, we've got the $7,500 postgraduate scholarship. I mean, there's a commitment um, to Husker student athletes far beyond when they're done. But then we always have one or two student athletes that, that speak. And Eleanor Dale, it was a powerful speech, um, got up and spoke about her experience. Now, this is an international student athlete who came during COVID, who knew nothing about Nebraska, right? Comes to a foreign land, gets stuck in a hotel with no one, and her experience and what she experienced and the exposure um, to so many different things is transformational to her life, you know? And so it was just so cool to hear her talk about the support of student athletes. And I, once again, want to salute, again, you can't say all the names, but so many people in Husker Athletics that work so hard on behalf of these student athletes that nobody knows about. I'm just grateful to all of them. Um, we had a 94% uh, graduation success rate. Again, we're in the top four in the Big Ten, including if you add the four schools coming in from the West Coast. So uh, I think it's five straight years, 94% or higher. So we're delivering on the promise of student athletes. We're, we're delivering on the fact that if you come here, you can be elite in your sport in terms of competition. And yet on the back end, we're gonna make sure that we have enough support. You're getting a great education. You understand community. And when you leave here, um, you've got the tools necessary to be really successful in the next phase of your life. That's great. Eleanor Dale, by the way, is still a f one of the three finalists for the National Player of the Year in college soccer. Amazing year. That team had It's clear to me run. she ought to win it. <laughs> led, the, led the country in scoring. I don't know how she doesn't win it, but you never know how these things work. Yeah, a little political sometimes, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As most things are. Trev's with us for the hour, 402-413-2400. I see some texts have come in. I'll get to some of those in the next segment. We have more to talk about. Obviously, uh, the basketball season's off to a good start. Wrestling's underway. A lot of things to talk about uh, with Trev during the, the coming uh, minutes of this hour. Dorothy Lynch, Homestyle Light and Lean Dressing. Endless flavorabilities. We'll have more coming up next. Hey, Husker fans, Alumni Hall is your ultimate Husker shopping experience. The best and largest selection of apparel for the whole family. Adidas, Champion, Columbia, plus gifts, accessories, and all of your tailgating needs. UNL students, faculty, and military always receive a 10% off in-store, and you can earn cash back with Hall Pass rewards. Shop their downtown Lincoln or South Point Pavilion locations or anytime at alumnihall.com. Alumni Hall, where Husker fans shop. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. 
Both farmers and Division I athletes are alike in that every year, every season presents a new opportunity. That is nothing new. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, embrace new opportunities. They focus on their roots and continue to stand strong with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperatives relies on their value of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. When you choose Aurora Cooperative, you're choosing a winning team that's dedicated to the success of our local farmers. Go Big Red and go Aurora Cooperative. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skechers shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska soybean farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. It's our athletic director show for the month of December. Trev Alberts with us, 402-413-2400 on our text line, Dale and Hastings. Trev, I have a question. I'm still confused on the rules of the transfer portal, specifically with the recent court ruling allowing multiple transfers and allowing the athlete to play immediately. Can you... Help me figure this out. Dale, I, I'd have to be totally honest with you and tell you that I, I share the same confusion you have. Um, essentially, a, a court ruled that the NCAA could not enforce the two transfer. There was a 14-day, and, and then I believe that the NCAA just settled with attorney generals on, I don't know all the, uh, the details and the exact, I, I don't want, I have a general idea, um, but, but I, I really don't want to, <laughs> to communicate too many of the specifics because I, I may get quite a bit of it wrong. So what, what, I, what I can do is um, try to get a little bit of uh, a detail from our compliance department, somehow get that communicated. I apologize. But it's, it, it, in all honesty, Dale, it's indicative of the challenge that we have, right? 
every time the national organization tries to create rules, a court strikes that down and that it's impermissible. And so it's been very challenging for athletic departments, coaching staffs. It just adds to the chaos that you've talked about previously, Greg. Yeah. Daniel B. in our YouTube chat room, can the Devaney Center be expanded for more seats in volleyball? It can. Um, you know, the, w w our team has actually um, done some preliminary analysis, and uh, I think we think we can get another four to 600 seats. Obviously, we don't want to impact the standing room only, and so we, we are looking into that. Um, I think there is possibly an opportunity for doing that. I don't want to commit to doing any of that at, the point, at this point, Greg, only because we need, we need to, to do some additional analysis. But um, we're looking at it, and we're hopeful we can get that done. It's a great environment, and it's a terrific place to go watch an event. Oh, it's it's um, you know you, I, I I love watching, especially in the NCAA tournament, the teams that qualified and you know were playing here, and there are teams that probably normally play in front of 500 to maybe a thousand fans to watch their faces when they walk in to see all the crowd. Um, sometimes I wish that we could do our normal Nebraska presentation at the NCAA because I think it's. Better, better. And frankly, more exciting. <laughs> um, but I, I yeah, I, I, I don't know that you can match that environment uh, across the country. Brian in Bellevue says, Trev, can you comment on the Big Ten looking at going to a jungle division where all teams get lumped into a ranking one through 18? Seems like the four to five premier powerhouse programs are going to get the prime spots and the rest become also Rands. You heard anything about this? I have not heard anything about that. No, I, I don't. That That's not been part of any... Of the conversations part of. that I'm that that I'm aware of, and we've got the schedule for the next four years, right? For yeah, football to come out. Yeah. Uh, last night, this came up with Fred on his show. Has how close is the Big Ten to determining basketball scheduling moving forward, and as it maybe even relates to a conference tournament? Would everybody go to a yeah. conference tournament moving forward? Uh, I just actually submitted Nebraska's vote today on wow. some things relative to um, number of games, formats, and those types of things. So. Would rather not, um, you know, Divulge talk your vote. about it here uh, okay. because ultimately, at the end of the day, it'll come down to a vote of the members of the Big Ten Conference. But there are some changes that are coming. I don't think they're going to be drastic based on what I'm hearing, um, but you know, uh, th there will be likely some change, especially when you have you know four additional um, members. Eighteen teams a lot for a tournament. I mean, that's just the reality. It of is it. when you're trying to get it done in a short amount of time, and so. Speaking of basketball, both teams 9-2, and two, men and women. They play both tomorrow night. The women are down in Lawrence to play Kansas. The men will be back home to take on North Dakota. Pretty good start to this season. Yeah, I, you know, I, um, first of all, I'm, I'm, you know, Amy continues just steady as she goes, continues to have a, a really solid team, a fundamentally sound, great shooting team, um, like their tenacity. You know, I, I give Fred a lot of credit. You know, I mean, he took a risk after that uh, Minnesota game and Creighton game when he basically challenged his team publicly and said, at some point, you have to decide that it's not okay to keep getting punked by the other team. And, you know, that can go one of two ways. And to his credit, based on the culture that that assistant coaching staff and him have built, the team responded. And I'll tell you, you know, those are two really impressive wins. Uh, maybe, you know, there might be some people who say, well, Michigan State's not quite the team they had they got a Hall of Fame coach for a reason, right? They've won a lot of games at Michigan State. And, uh, and then to see what they did in the second half at Kansas State, got a lot of respect for that Kansas State program. They've won a lot of games there. Um, that's, a, that's a team that's starting to create a little belief in themselves um, and some mental toughness. Um, you know, I, you, you don't want to get too excited, but both of those teams have a, a real chance to make a difference in the Big Ten Conference. The transfer portal is certainly in, it's always influenced basketball. I think more football's catching up to that, though it's becoming more. But I think they've identified guys that they want to bring in, the, the rink mass, the Josiah Alex, that fit what they want to do. And it's, they've really done it in back to back years, what they put that group together. Well, I, I would say a couple things. And, and obviously, Fred deserves all the credit. He's the head coach. But he made some tough decisions relative to his coaching staff. And, and I, I really believe that Adam and Nate. Um, and, and the rest of, you know, there's more than just the actual coaches, too. There's, there's support staff on the, on, on the basketball program as well. But I, I think they have great unity. Um, I think they have a clear plan and vision. And I think Amy does, too. I mean, she made some staff changes as well. I think the most important thing as a coach is just to have a very clear understanding and vision about who you want and what you're going to stand for. And to your point, then, then with the transfer portal, it allows you the opportunity to then find – 
pieces that fit within your culture um, because there's lots of good players, there's lots of good talent, but that doesn't mean they're a good cultural fit based on the type of team you want to have. And so I think they've really grown in that area, to your point, of understanding what they want, how they want it to operate, and uh, the team, clearly they have great cultures because they've bought in. And it's fun to watch them be a team, play hard. We mentioned that the semester ended last Friday, and it's a long time before the students get back, but there's a lot of basketball games. You need the people to come out and buy those seats, and I guess there's some good seats available. For there's great games. seats available, and um, really encourage our fans to, to take a look at, at all those games, get out and support our women's program, get out and support Fred. Um, like you said, there's, there's opportunities. You know, if you've got family in town and <clears throat> you're wondering what to do, what better thing to yeah. do than head down to the Haymarket and watch a – a great college basketball game uh, with two teams that are, are really competing at a high level right now. PAC PBA is the Indiana game coming up on January the 7th. I know you'd love to have a huge turnout for that. They're going to retire Jordan Hooper's <clears throat> number at that game. She was a fantastic player for the Cornhuskers. So with the students gone, folks, here's a chance for you to get in there and, and get some good seats and support these two teams that are off to good starts. It's always fun to, to do those type of sellout games, you know, and, and uh, I know Amy and, and the team are really passionate about that. Obviously, Indiana is a great program, so we'd love to have people come out. But to your point, um, students gone, great opportunity, lots of wonderful seats right next to the action. Come down, support the Huskers, and uh, have a great time. Yeah, good stuff right there. 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program tonight. The, the NCAA president, uh, Baker, who was here for – Volleyball Day in Nebraska, made a visit to Lincoln, Nebraska for that, um, made some, uh, raised some eyebrows a week or so ago with some comments about some things that you've alluded to in the past is about trying to get some more money in the pockets of student athletes. Yeah, and, and, and uh, really appreciate President Baker was actually down in Tampa as well. Oh, he was. And uh, went down to the championship. So kind of the bookends, you know, here for Volleyball Day in Nebraska. And, um, you know, I mean, he, he's got a monumental task in front of him. And, and I think sometimes you forget – and you think about just Division One, 350 some schools, and you think about the pendulum, and and here we are, this little sliver way on the right, which is the Big Ten and the SEC and maybe a few others, but but just the the disparate difference between all these schools, and that's not even Division Two and Division Three, right? So you have all of this membership that you're trying to manage through, and there's a few of us that have very significant challenges relative to, in terms of resources and fusion, um, and so I, you know, I mean. I applauded him doing what he did. And there, were, there you know, obviously are people that are frustrated about, my goodness, what is this going to do? And how could you throw the grenade into the middle of the room and walk out? The reality is this. You know, what we've been doing isn't working, Greg. I, there isn't a court ruling that the NCAA, and by the way, before we pile on the NCAA, that's us. We are the NCAA. It's a membership organization that the University of Nebraska happens to be a part of. So, so we're not winning. What, what, what we're currently doing is not working. So I appreciated him, him at least having a conversation. And what I took out of this is that everything must be on the table. No matter how radical of an idea that you can think of or hear of, I think now is the time to examine everything. Everything must be on the table for college athletics. And uh, uh, Nebraska is going to be a strong proponent in participating in that um, because we have a, a sincere and, and vested interest. But there's going to be a lot of things, you know, we're, uh, the, the, the convention in January is going to be very interesting, right? Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a part of a, a, you know, a committee on NIL that Gene Smith is chairing. We're just one of three different components of NIL. And there's going to be emergency legislation that's put through uh, in, in January that ultimately the membership will vote on. And essentially what it, you know, will do is allow, with the exception of the institution themselves physically, but it's, it's an effort for the NCAA to say, is it time for us to expand benefits to student athletes, including economic benefits? That's really what we're talking about. And so it'll be interesting to see what, how the membership responds to that. And then I think the response after that will be really important to a few schools because, um, you know, we're, we're in challenging times and we've got to think differently. We've got to be more nimble and we've got to adapt and change. And uh, the status quo is not working. And uh, so I, I applaud it. Um, I'm, I'm glad he did it. Um, you could have argued about the sequencing a little bit, <laughs> given, you know, the, um, the challenge in trying to look at settling some of the litigation that we're currently engaged in. But um, 
you know, this is a fascinating time. I would just encourage our fans to be patient and recognize the next six months to a year um, could be could be transformational to to college athletics. You've had some big time coaches, Jim Harbaugh in Michigan, Chip Kelly at UCLA, have both have used their platforms in recent weeks to talk about we need to get we need to funnel more money to the student athletes that are raising all this revenue through ticket sales and television numbers. So you've got some big players in college football standing up and making some noise. Well, you, you do, and, and, and that's part of the challenge, right, is because when a couple folks say that, the rest of college athletics who don't have the resources that some are saying, wait. And, and by the way, Greg, there are schools in the Big Ten that are saying, <laughs> wait, we can't do that either. And so th there are, you can't imagine the conversations that are happening. People are talking about private equity getting involved in college athletics. Th there are conversations that are happening that we've never contemplated before. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying um, th these, are, these are changing times. And um, I'm really confident in the University of Nebraska, the Board of Regents, our donors. There's a real and sincere interest to help Nebraska navigate through these. I'm not doing this alone. Our executive staff's not doing this alone. Um, but we're, we're working as hard as we can to make sure that, that our student athletes, and I will say this too, and then I'll stop, I'm sorry. We will fight to try to retain the connection to the academic side. You know, while, while more and more, you know, sort of benefits may go to student athletes, I, I believe that's a wonderful thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with them having an advanced, you know, sort of economic benefits, if you will. Um, I, I, you know, I think the employee status is problematic for a number of reasons, but I think at the end of the day, being tethered to academics, it has to still matter. We have to serve student athletes. A college degree is really, really important to them long term, and we can't lose sight of that. Very good. You mentioned Will Shields earlier. He's on that playoff committee. He, was he part is. Of that. That's good for him. Great for Will to be a part of that. Well, he, that's exactly the type of things that Will Shields needs to be involved yeah. in, right? I mean, nobody has more football knowledge than Will. He's a great human being. He's a great ambassador to Nebraska and uh, really, really intelligent. And I, I don't like him uh, for, you know, the uh, pulling, you know, the G plays that he pulled around and, and had to knock out the, the, the outside linebacker back in the day. And he knocked me on the ground a few times. But um, just a class human being. Sure is. All right, you need to take a break. 402-413-2400. Lori and Elm Creek will get to your call on the other side. Keep those texts flowing in. Our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. They are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. More with Trev coming up next. A few drinks at home after work. A couple of hits at a party with some friends. Over-the-counter drugs for a minor illness a new daily prescription, and you're not quite sure how it makes you feel. It doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If it impairs you, driving becomes deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. Com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! 
Smith. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks. Foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Wow. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest premier John Deere dealers. I am the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Have you winterized your John Deere tractor? You know, I, was just, I just told my wife about that. We, we got to get Acres back. I got a John Deere. They come. They've yeah. got a little mobile thing. They don't, you don't even they have come to and service they come, thing? do it right there at the house. And, Where did this uh, come from? I need well, to you got to pay for that. it. It's not free. <laughs> And they, you know, they sharpen your blade. They'll change the oil. That's tremendous. I mean, a real, a real man would change the oil himself. Nope, I don't know how to do that. I don't know. I don't either. I don't know how to do it. We let the experts. That's a pretty good service, Acres. That's cool. They have a great service, and it's well done. And and this time, I'm. They don't know this yet, but I got a little lawn boy handheld, mm -hmm. and I, I got to get that um, sharpened as well. So I'm going to try to slide a blade in. While you're say, here. While you're here, can you just sharpen this one too? Why would I don't know if they will or not, but I'm going to try. Bet they will. 402-413-2400. <laughs> Let's go to Elm Creek. Lori, you're up next with Trev. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, um, Lori. I had, hi. I had um, my daughter in 1994 in October, and the nurses were doing a survey because there was excessive babies being born because they thought everybody was happy because Nebraska won the national championship. Is mm. that about right? Yeah, I, 94. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you know what the number one baby boy name was? <laughs> Tommy Frazier. No. <laughs> I don't Wrong. know. Guess again. Trev. <laughs> How about that? Well, they were off by a year then. Because you were done in 93. Yeah. yeah. Well, we played them. It was... The 94 Orange Bowl, yeah. it's a little confusing. because like January 1st or whatever. But, yeah, I, I, um, I actually just uh, had, a, had a great meeting yesterday. Um, the new superintendents of, of LPS schools and his wife came and introduced, and, and their son is named Trevor. And uh, so it was, it's been great over the time. You know, I've had a chance maybe at games, there will be some folks that will come up and introduce um, themselves. Their name's Trev and, and uh, kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. That would have been, 
they'd be like 28 years old now. That's right. How about that. <laughs> yeah. Lori, well, thank, thank thanks you, for Lori. calling. Merry Christmas. You're welcome. Appreciate you calling from out in Elm Creek. Let's uh, stay in Lincoln. Gus, you're up next with Trev. Hi, Gus. Hello. Yes, hey. sir. Um, okay, so I'll get right to it. Um, was wondering if you would have any way of influencing a volleyball match in L.A. with either UCLA or USC the same weekend that we are taking on USC for mm. football. Wow. Gus, that's a, that's a great call and, and a great question. You know, it's, it's one of the things that uh, that topic has kind of come up a little bit with um, scheduling for all of our sports with the Big Ten is to think about and, you know, it just kind of makes some sense. It it's harder with TV now because stuff gets moved around. But if you can really, if you can, you know, if, if, if a fan base is going to be playing a team in football, well, you know, is there a way you can look at, Instead of just looking at schedules in a vacuum of this is our football schedule, how do you look at in totality of all of your schedules to do like what Gus is saying? Can you find a way, you know, it would make a lot of sense, yeah. right? You play a football game here and whether it's the next day or that day or that night or earlier on, you get a chance like a two for one to see the Huskers compete, you know? So it's a great idea. Logistically, it's a little bit challenging, but, but it is a topic that has come up uh, in our meetings at the Big Ten about, and about trying to find, you know, it actually extended further, and I'm not sure this would impact us, but is because you're looking at cutting. Remember, we have 18 schools now. As we're looking at cutting costs and how do we find ways to transport student athletes, you know, is there multiple student athletes and teams that could travel somehow together to cut down costs, create some efficiency? Yeah. So those conversations may be a little bit different than what Gus is suggesting, but th those have actually, um, I don't know exactly what will happen with it, but they have come up as part of the conversation. Yep. Take care of you, Gus. Yeah, absolutely. I just really hope we can do that because it would. I think you just get such a outpouring of fan support to attend both matches, the, both the match and the game. It just is kind of a no-brainer. Either UCLA or USC. Yeah, uh, yeah. Either one of those two volleyball teams. Great thought. Thank you, guys. Absolutely right. Thank you, Gus. <laughs> yeah, great. Really good thought there. I didn't, I didn't never thought of that, so it's good. Uh, for Trev, this is uh, Gail in Omaha. Uh, what do you think of the volleyball Final Four being played in a arena where they had the court on top of ice, uh, that hockey arena? Can't the NCAA do better for their athletes? It was, according to Jessica, it was down there pretty chilly in that arena. Yeah, I, you know, they're, they're hard things in a sense. You know, I, I, um, I know what the NCAA is trying to do is, is they're trying to give multiple communities an opportunity. You know, let's, let's spread our... I've always just, this is my personal opinion. I love a static championship. I love the fact that the college, college, World Series. college World Series in Omaha and every team is starting. I mean, people have, you know, top baseball programs in their facilities have pictures of Omaha. And this is where we're all trying to get. I love, yep. you know, I think having some consistency in your championship that just the way the NCAA does championships, they issue RFPs and ultimately communities get to to bid on those, and uh, that's the only and fairest way that they've come up with doing it. And obviously, Tampa won the bid. The NCAA, I mean, people, you know, they are, in essence, you know, they, they run a business where that revenues that are generated helps to fund the NCAA and, and those types of things. But, but I understand the concern. I actually sat in a row that was right behind where the, where the glass is. Yeah. <laughs> so the people that sat in front of me were in folding chairs. That actually was you know, the bench for the hockey players. And then you have the infill for where they go in. Those were also filled in. So we had to do that a little bit at Baxter Arena when I was back in, in Omaha at UNO, um, when we would transition Baxter Arena from a hockey facility into something else. So it's real, it's definitely colder. You do the best that you can. Um, but um, those are RFPs that the NCAA puts out. And it sounded like Tampa did a good job of hosting. Oh, they did a great job. I mean, I, I that was the thing too, you know, I. I saw some of it on social media, but you, you can't imagine just how important it is to the University of Nebraska and the strength of our brand, you know, just to have Nebraska, the end, plastered all over Tampa. Yeah. And the number of people, and um, it, it, it really is important. And by the way, there's lots of people in Florida who are Husker fans or might be alums who had a chance to come over and, you know, it's part of the reason why Indomitian and his family mm -hmm. and his younger sister were able to join us for both games. Um, so... Um, I understand the point, um, but I, I, I'm not sure how much influence that I could have or, or even the Big Ten on where those locations exist. Next year it's in Louisville, and I don't think they play hockey in that building. So that's where it's going to be in the final. Not that we're 
writing ourselves to think to be there, but I like our chances. <laughs> well, huh? You know, that's, that's the problem with success, right, is now John's created an expectation. Final four. Everybody. What a disappointment. You didn't make the final four, right? That's why I said we cannot take no. for granted. Don't take for granted this team. Um, don't take for granted Coach Cook and our coaching staff because we're not guaranteed success in the future. Another sport that's underway and off to a really good start, the wrestling squad. Mark Manning's yeah. team's really doing well. They had a home duel with South Dakota State last Saturday, and they've got some really good wrestlers. It's a great program. You know, Mark has just so consistently continued to build that program. And um, he and I have talked about that. But South, South Dakota State was 15th ranked yeah. wrestling team in the country. I mean, you got to give them a lot of credit. They had a great, um, a great team as well. And so just continuing to grow that wrestling program, Peyton, Rob, some just, I mean, Ridge love it. Another, you know, they're, they're not just – they're not just winning, but they're, they're fun to watch because they're aggressive, you know, wrestlers that are, um, there's just constant action. And, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing how our wrestling program finishes because they've just been incrementally inching up in a, I mean, think about the Big Ten. It's unbelievable. Iowa, Penn State, you're looking at Ohio State, Wisconsin. I mean, some of the top wrestling programs in America, they're all in the Big Ten, and, and we should be really proud of our wrestling program here. A lot of big duels coming up for them in January yeah. and in February. We're back with our final segment with Trev, 402-413-2400. We're back to wrap it up next. Love is all around during the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event. By the end of this, our 16th year, Subaru and retailers like us will have donated over $285 million to charities such as the ASPCA, Make-A-Wish, Mills on Wheels America, and the National Park Foundation. Beardmore Subaru is proud to support Sarpy County Housing Authority during the Subaru Share the Love event. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or online at BeardmoreSubaru.com for more details. Hey Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Woodhouse Auto Family, they are your trusted auto partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Trev Alberts with us for a few more minutes. Our December show will be back in late January for his next appearance. Text from a guy, Gray in Gardner, Kansas. I'm a proud dad of a 2023 Husker graduate, lifelong Husker fan. Trev, if you have time, I'm curious what your view is regarding how to try to get some guardrails around the current state of unfettered free agency where tampering is allowed. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's been a really, it's really a challenge for our coaches, right? Like, I mean, there's nothing stopping 
negative recruiting. There's nothing. And that, that's why I try to hint at it. It's not just Coach Rule. You look at the rest of our programs. I mean, you're going to have some natural attrition. You're going to have people entering the portal. That makes sense. But I think culture building and, and the value of culture is more important than ever before. And um, so that's part of what we're trying to do at the NCAA level, institutional involvement, is to, to just, to, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for 1890 uh, that, that they've stepped in the gap for us. I mean, the reality is this, right? Like, you think about where we are today from when a long time ago when the first collective started popping up around college athletics, right? I mean, we, we couldn't even, we had zero interaction. And little by little, you know, the, the, the goalposts have moved a little bit. We've been able to have more involvement. But, you know, at some point, having uh, institutional involvement Guardrails, you know, is is an old line, but it, but but at the end of the day, just having some involvement would be really really important. But we'll see where all this goes. I I've always believed in the end, eventually, institutionally, whether it's through collective bargaining or however it gets there, the institutional involvement in this space will be real. But in the meantime, if we didn't have 1890, we've been talking about all this recruiting success. We've been talking about how hard our coaches are working. 1890 has been a really critical. Uh, component and piece to help our student athletes monetize their name, image, and likeness. Kind of a different finger of this whole thing is there's there's stories about when teams converge in the middle of the field to shake hands after games, the coaches are approaching guys and going, hey, you want to look around, we, we would listen to you. Well, not only, you know, it, it works both ways. Not only is that happening, but people are leveraging players to ask other players. And so it's like, hey, we've got a great team here. Have you ever thought about coming here? You know, I, I think you can really do a great job in the NIL space. And so it, it, is a really, it is a really challenging time. And not only are you recruiting, you know, future student athletes, you got to re-recruit all your own. And then I'll say on the other side, so let, let, let's, let's give some balance to this conversation, Greg. So people are frustrated about the transfer portal. And players. I will also say there are coaches telling players, go in the transfer portal, right? So that does happen as well. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I, again, I – you know, I, I really appreciate what um, Coach Rule's approach and our football program. Um, I believe that they, they honor their word, and um, we do the very best we can to honor and, and support and grow and develop our own internally. And then we'll always be looking to add a, additional talent to help us get over the hump. Just over a minute left in the program. Let's go out to Carney and Chris. Good evening, Chris. You're up with Trev. Hey, Trev. Hi, Chris. How are you? Hey, you are just a best athletic director just appreciate your um leadership of our of our program and quick question for you i know coach osborne had talked years ago about having a hall of fame like facility or like a building dedicated to just honoring husker athletics have you thought about that future plan in years to come you know it's a great question chris and it, it we have and as part of the stadium you know i we tell all prospective donors and others, you know, that the reality is, is the Go Big project is the catalyst to everything we get to think about in terms of backfill at the stadium. And so we've kind of thought about the stadium in a couple different ways. Obviously, the north side of the stadium, you've got the athletics piece, and we're thinking about some other opportunities there. The east stadium, you think about academics. We already have some academic programming. South stadium, the new south stadium student engagement, those types of things. Well, West Stadium, as you think about the training table and the existing stuff that will move over to go big, yep, I think it gives, it gives us an opportunity to really rethink how we can do some of that. How do we tell our story, not just in football, but the rest of our student athletes and really engage our fans? That's an opportunity, Chris, to do exactly what Coach talked about. Good way to end it. Merry Christmas to you. Have a Merry Christmas. I don't know if you're traveling, but if you do, travel safe. We are going to travel and go see my dad down in Florida. Fantastic. Good to see you. Thank you. And we've got another hour of sports hunting on the other side, so don't go away. Come on back. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. 
Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is bringing you more this holiday season. Finishing the year with big savings on the entire model lineup during the Wrap Up the Year sales event. Save up to $13,000 off MSRP on a 2024 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Laramie 4x4 for qualified buyers. Explore all our year-end lease and finance deals at WoodhouseCDJRBellevue.com or WoodhouseChryslerJeepDodge.com. This is Woodhouse. With approved credit, tax title license extra. When financed with Chrysler Capital, $299 dot fee to its sign Stock number BC240134. Offer expires 1231-2023. See dealer for details. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. <laughs> cow chip throwing. <laughs> or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers.
Good evening, I'm Camden Cohn, and our sports ticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. Earlier today, Husker wrestler Peyton Robb was named Big Ten Wrestler of the Week. Robb defeated Cale Swenson, the 16th ranked wrestler in the 157 pound weight class. Last weekend, 6-0 in the duel against South Dakota State to increase his winning streak to 13. Two Nebraska volleyball players entered the transfer portal today. Hayden Kubik and Caroline Juravicious are the newest members to the portal. Kubik played in nine matches this season and will have two seasons of eligibility remaining, while Juravicious redshirted this past season and will have four years of eligibility remaining with her new team. Four Husker football players were named to the College Sport Communicators Academic All-District Team. Isaac Gifford, Malcolm Hartzog, Marco Ortiz, and Brian Buscini were all named to the team. To be eligible, the players had to maintain a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher. And finally, tune in tomorrow morning from 7 to 10 Central Time for live coverage of National Signing Day, featuring interviews with Coach Rule, other members of the coaching staff, and some of the signees. You can watch coverage on X, Facebook, and YouTube. Our sports ticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Lawrence on the other end lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams. Into the hands of Lawrence. The baseball pass and the jab. The jam by Gary on the other end. She will reset with 12 on the shot clock. Once the screen gets her from Markowski. To the right elbow, back out top. Markowski will shoot a three. You betcha. Ties the game. A three-pointer by Markowski off the assist from Hayden. Lawrence with the ball. Cross court, mid court to Tominaga. Shoots up a 30-footer. Got it. Tominago with a three. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key. You betcha. Natalie Potts, the Big Ten freshman of the week with a triple. Huskers ball, high right side. Mass shoots up another three. Got it. He's three for three. Rink Mast. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. Thank you. Welcome back. Hour number two, Sports Island here on a Tuesday night, we'll have basketball tomorrow night, so no show for us. Both the men and women are in action. The women will be down in Lawrence to take on the Jayhawks. That is their final non-conference game. The men will be hosting North Dakota. Jessica will have the call on BTN Plus tomorrow night. What did you think of the AD last hour? It was great. A lot of, covered a lot of stuff and some stuff that's going on here in news, but then also some kind of some questions that are big in overall in collegiate athletics right now i like his again we say this a lot but his transparency to answer any and all questions that are that are thrown at him well the, we, we learned that they are looking at adding some seats to devaney which i think they'll sell them yeah right, right. oh I yeah think they'll they'll get rid I don't of think those. they'll have a problem with you that can walk cameron <laughs> cameron <laughs> that's the name he gets when he's in trouble <laughs> uh, and, and also i i do think that College football, and we're on the night or the the eve of National Signing Day tomorrow. I, they they got to work this out because the season ends. You're getting ready for bowl games next year. Twelve teams will be getting ready for playoff appearances, and you got the transfer portal going on. You're trying to sign kids. You're trying to fly over the country and go visit people. I, I don't know how that is humanly possible. I think they got to make some changes to that. And yeah. I don't have the answer. I don't know what it is. And then also, too, it's just the time of year when you see a lot of coaching changes, too. So right. there, it's just and but it is it is nice to have a lot of it done and to be able to get some of those guys that are on campus as early enrollees. I think it's there's some good things about it, but there it's also really challenging time to, to be able to put together a recruiting class. Can you imagine basketball teams having a signing day like March 15th? Yeah. Like, well, wait, March Madness is going on. Well, that's what we kind of do in football. And I, I agree the semester is the problem because you're trying to get them here and you got classes starting in a few weeks. But, I, but, so but I don't have the answer. It's not but. like we didn't have early enrollees before they changed the signing date. Good point. But They just showed up and then signed their letter later. I remember when it happened when they first made that December signing day. I remember the I was at Oklahoma at the time. What that was coach, that, eight years ago, seven, eight years ago? I can't even it's remember. Been, but Something the coaching like staff at Oklahoma was 
really excited about it. Like they were thankful about it. And I don't know if, you know, some of the coaches feel differently now or if it's, you know, still something that they're they're glad about getting those guys locked in so you don't have to continue to recruit through two more months. But, you know, there's there's certainly some positives to it, but there are some negatives. There's no doubt about it. I, when would be the ideal date? I don't know. Could you do an August signing well, period? Well, that's but what the, I was about to say. The problem is in kids, some kids develop a lot their senior year or they get hurt and you're going, I don't know that I want to take somebody that's now hurt. Yeah, I, I and, and again, things change so much between August and December with – programs how many kids across the country decommit recommit there's changes in the coaching staff i mean it's just a lot of and that's the other point you got but you know basketball does have an early signing period in november where you don't know if that coach is still going to be there but the nc does let you out if that happens if there is a coaching change you are released from that scholarship the schools have to release you to go so I, again i don't have all the answers i just i don't know i don't know how they're going to do it i you know and I hope this is a problem next year. I hope Nebraska's one of the final 12 and we're in the playoff and Matt Rule's got to figure out, whew, do I game plan the line or do I fly to Ainsworth and go see a recruit? I mean, it, it's, 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 it's tough. I think that's, too, where maybe some of the, the tweaks to some of the rules in recruiting and who can be on the road, who can recruit, who can coach, be on the field coaching. Right. So when you, you talk about having those bowl practices – and maybe you've got a position coach that is on the road recruiting, and then you're one of your analysts or GAs can be on the field coaching. And and if they know what needs to be implemented, it, it would help. You know, if you're going to keep it where it is, I think you need to allow some changes to some of the what's allowed in terms of coaching and also recruiting so that maybe it, it uh, alleviates, alleviates some of that off of the plates of some of the staff. Tomorrow should be a fun day. We start coverage at 7 a.m., so, ooh, 12 hours from now. Less than 12 hours now. We'll be on the YouTube channel tomorrow. Jessica and I will. We'll have coverage. We'll be hearing from the coaches. We'll hear from some of the now Cornhuskers, was what they will be once they sign their national letters of intent tomorrow. Tomorrow's the kind of day that you, as a coach, and all coaches, they don't want surprises, right? They don't want to get wake up and go, where's – Where's Cole Hartman's letter? Wait, it's not come in yet. What 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 has happened to Cole Hartman? Did he did he flip on us? You don't want that happening tomorrow. No, I I think though too uh, again with the relationships they built, there's very little of that probably with this staff. I think they feel pretty good about the guys they've got locked in. I just think maybe there's some other surprises for some guys that might not be committed here. Right. You know, I think the guys that are committed here seem to be pretty locked in. It's more so maybe some of those late minute additions that you can get that maybe you didn't know if you were going to get, but it seems like this staff, you know, I've talked to a few of them already. This, this class is really, really bought in. I, I mean, I do this every year and this is one of the most bought in groups that I've ever talked to that really, really believe that are hungry, that are just really um, in love with the things that are going on here. And, and they, they're a tight group too, they've, they've communicated. So I, I like this class and you know, I, I think you've, you've talked to a few of the coaches. It could be really instrumental in terms of where this program is going. You know, you talk about that first senior class, but this is their first actual signing class right. because that staff came in later last year and and some of the guys that were committed before but this is their first class that they recruited from start to finish and it's it's going to be a really big class a really um monumental class in terms of taking the program continuing to take the program where they want it to go so um it's an important class and i i'm excited to get to talk about them all day tomorrow it's gonna be fun there were five that were here over the weekend including dylan riola who didn't committed yesterday to nebraska so i'm anxious to see the the other four do we get any all of that that group that was here on the final weekend. That's always kind of curious to me. You had a couple that were committed to other schools uh, that still could be in play in all this. So we'll be monitoring all that as the day gets going tomorrow. But it's 7 a.m. YouTube channel. Those of you who watch us nightly on Sports Idea, same thing. That's where you'll be able to find us tomorrow morning. We'll be 7 to 10-ish tomorrow. Uh, expecting the head coach to make an appearance with us before we sign off tomorrow as well. But uh, looking forward to a fun day. Uh, the, for the National Signing Day. Mike Schaefer, 24-7 Sports, will join us here in just a little bit to kind of give us his thoughts about this class, which is really interesting because you've got a lot of legacy kids that are committed to Nebraska. You've got Caleb Benning, Dam Damon's son, Keelan Smith, Neil Smith's son. You've got uh, Clark out in Montana, Ken Clark's kid, 
uh, who's committed to Nebraska. So you got some legacy Huskers that could be a part of this thing for tomorrow. Well, right after we signed off last night and we talked about the wrap-up of the volleyball season, remember, they, they have a portal system in, in the sport of volleyball as well. We learned last night Camden had it in the ticker that Caroline Juravicious and Hayden Kubik have both put their name into the transfer portal on the surprise meter, I, it's not very high for me. I, I, you know, you, you hate to see anybody opt to leave the program, but Hayden had very limited playing time. Caroline redshirted this past year. I think she's got a big time upside. I think they love the, the Husker coaches. I know loved her talent and ability, but she did redshirt. Surprised at all that those two go in the portal? I'm not surprised that there are portal additions. I, I'm not because there's. With everybody coming back, you've got a couple of signees coming in, potentially an opening for if there's a transfer portal get, like look what, how big Merritt Beeson was. The thing about this this group and how close-knit they were in the chemistry, you have to be pretty cognizant of what you bring in to add to that group and, and how they fit chemistry-wise if you do go to the portal. But with so many people, with everybody coming back, and there's just a limited number of scholarships, and you can only carry so many players. So you had a feeling that you would have uh, some some turnover just to make room for those additions. But um, I don't know if I'm, I'm as surprised by Cubic, but I, I am a little by Caroline Juravicious because she was, you know, I got a chance to chat with her last summer. She's really, really impressive and really love this program and, and – um, had it really had believed in it for a long time. It was her dream to come here and yeah, has a tremendous upside, but I do think just look at the the outsides and the depth that's there and how, you know, I mean, even Allie Batenhorst, who was the number one recruit out of Texas and the national Gatorade national player of the year might not have played very much this season. Had Lindsay Krause not been hurt, right. you know, it might've been a more limited role for her. It's just, it's hard to get playing time and but all of those outsides coming back, maybe Caroline sees a, a path elsewhere where she can really go in and make a bigger impact, but, you know, wish them the best. And, uh, you know, this, this team is, that's just kind of what you get when you have that much talent where you're going to have some turnover with some players that could be starters and be big, big, big time players at other programs that are, you know, just limited roles just because of the amount of talent that, that this program has. Just to remind everybody, Nebraska, signed two in November. That was the, the signing period for every sport minus football. And it was Olivia Mock, who is from Bennington. I think her last name is pronounced Mock. If I'm mispronouncing that, I apologize. She's a libero. And so you bring in a libero next year. Lexi's a senior, will be a senior next year. So that makes sense to get another libero in the roster. And then you have Scotter Pierce, who's an outside hitter from the Kansas City area, uh, so she comes in. So you add a libero and an outside hitter. And so you have two. You were at the scholarship limit this year. So you felt like, well, two. And with no seniors on the roster, just do the math. You had to, you had to take two off. And so here are two that go. And I, it, we may, there may be somebody else. I, I'm not, I don't know anything. I, I don't know anything. So, but if there is... You know, there's going to be a lot of people in that portal, as Jessica mentioned, that obviously would love to be a part of Husker Magic, be a part of this whole thing. But Nebraska did sign two, so you knew that they needed to make room for two. And these at least would – this would – two and two equals four, right? Two <laughs> minus two equals zero. Maybe that's what you do. Two minus two, zero. Yeah. It would be net zero. Yeah, there you go. You know me in math. I don't know Ooh. if we should start talking about math in, in this program. So – We'll, we'll keep monitoring that. I, it was funny because we had a text right when we were leaving the air last night about, do you imagine, do you see you see any roster movement? Well, yes, you had to because you signed two, you'd have been over the top. Would you and I have chatted about on-air, off-air because going back to the signing day in November, you knew something was going to have to give. Right. You know, you have just have 12 scholarships and you you just, you can't add two extra. So you you had to, something had to give there in terms of if, you, if you've signed those players, they're coming in, you got to make room for them somehow. So not surprised that there are some additions, um, just maybe a little bit surprised on, on who they are at this point. Right. So we'll, we'll continue to monitor that. That uh, portal period is just like, it lines up just, I think, with football. So it's, they've got about another 20 some days left in uh, the portal time. Uh, 
Gay from Omaha wrote in during Trev's show about the volleyball Final Four being on a hockey rink, and she, she did write back, and she said that her bigger point was who advocates for the athletes of these four teams. Trev is a huge advocate for athletes. Hope the playing surface can at least be high priority for the NCAA selection to host. I don't think the playing surface was any problem. It was cool in there, and I think Lauren talked about the coolness does affect the volleyball a little bit, but I don't think the athletes were in any danger, were they, in this thing? I don't think they were in, in danger. I think maybe some of the players on the sideline were a little chilly, and even Coach Cook was a little chilly. I know the coaching staff. It was cold in there. I mean, I, I was cold, but I don't know if, like, once you start moving around and you had uh, more of the bodies fill in, if it, it felt as drastic. But, you know, you and I have talked to Lauren multiple times, and, I remember going back a couple years ago and, and she was talking about some of the courts and the surfaces and, and how that can affect the play. And she said the court itself was was great. It was good. Yeah. And it was just the fact that it was cold underneath and how it changed the, uh, affected the, how the ball moved. But like you said, every, every team had to do yeah. it. Every team had to deal with it. It wasn't like it affected one team more than the other. And I don't, you know, if it wasn't safe for the athletes, if it was if it wasn't, you know, conducive to what they need, then it, the NCAA wouldn't have allowed it to happen. And if there were issues with players, that will be something that teams will pass along. All four teams, if there were issues with that, will pass along to the NCAA and say, mm -hmm. hey, we can't play in a hockey arena anymore. Right. So if it was an issue, I, it will be addressed and changed. But I hadn't really heard much other than it was a little cold and the ball moved a little bit differently. But if, if it was bad for the athlete, there's no way they would have done it. And if there were some issues, it will be addressed. There's, I, I just, yeah. I think, with as big as volleyball is now, and as big a voice as John Cook has, if it if it was an issue, he will address that. He will make sure that hey, next time, let's try to figure out a way around a hockey arena. Camp is a hard place and say no to. And and, and Gavin says it, that she realizes it's a bidding process. These communities put in bids to host these tournaments, and they put in a dollar figure because they feel like they can recoup it and their merchants and their vendors and all those can recoup it on the other end, and they're trying to get hotel rooms filled up, restaurants full, and that was mission accomplished by the turnout, particularly by Nebraska fans down in Tampa. Yeah, and it was. there's a lot that are around the arena that you don't have to Uber everywhere. You can walk. Um, you can get food. They had a great fan fest before. There's a lot of bars. I know there was a Husker alumni event that was just massive right there that was walking distance from the arena. So... That, that also goes into it, too, is... But I, I do like what Trev said about finding... Softball does it in Oklahoma City. A permanent, you know, like yeah. a, And baseball in Omaha. It would be cool if you could start maybe figuring that out where, I mean, Omaha would be great. But, you know, if you could find a place right. where it was stationary and, and everybody congregated there every single year and, and it, it grew in that way. Because I think both places now have fans that go just because of the event as opposed to following their teams right. there. Whereas right now, I think you're just getting fans that are following their teams as opposed to, oh, let's make this an event that we go to every year, no matter who's playing. Right. Devil's advocate is you expose the sport to different parts of the country. That's the other part of it. And, uh, it, and NCAA basketball has done that for years. You got them up in Buffalo or Seattle or Spokane or wherever they put those things. Has that helped college basketball? Probably has. Yeah, but the thing about the college basketball tournament is it's, you know, with, with volleyball, you have different sites that are usually home sites. With basketball, you're going to different arenas across the country right. every year. So it's it's not like you're going to home schools or home sites where right. teams play. Louisville next year, and you've been in that arena. Yes, have well, I? No, no, you didn't. Husker women played in oh, that yeah, arena. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the, at the Yum University Center. of Louisville, yes. Yum Center? Yeah, the KMC Yum Center, that's yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, Yum Center, that's where yeah. the Final Four is next year for volleyball. You could have Louisville there. You might have a home team, which a lot of people say that's what happens in Omaha for Nebraska. All right, uh, Cole tells me to tell you to contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. When we come back, we'll talk to Shave. Mike Shave, we're going to join us from 24 7 Sports. We'll get his take on National Signing Day, which is now inside of 12 hours away for getting launched. So I'll have that for you next.
Other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation is known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Things that impair you come in many different shapes and sizes. Some are the shape of beer and liquor bottles. Others look like cigarettes but aren't cigarettes at all. These are the things we know impair us, the things our parents warned us about. What we're not always aware of is our new prescription or the -the over-the-counter medicine we picked up just for allergies or a bad cold. See, it doesn't just matter how much of a substance you take. If you are impaired, driving is deceptively dangerous. Don't drive impaired. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved-up RAV4. And tow all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Tamen 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Drive with purpose and arrive in style when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Chevy. With advanced capabilities and safety features, the Chevy lineup puts you in a position to upgrade your ride and keep moving with confidence. Choose from a variety of models equipped with a spacious, detail-focused interior and distinctively modern exterior. Purchasing your next vehicle at Woodhouse Chevy is an easy choice. Shop our current offers and inventory today and find new roads in-store or online with Woodhouse Chevy. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Back at Center Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. National Signing Day is now just hours away from happening, and none better to break it all down for us than Mike Schaefer of 24-7 Sports. 
Shafe, how you doing? You've been a little busy, I'm sure, the last couple weeks. I have. I have been uh, quite busy. Looking forward to, like, Thursday, just kind of, you know, enjoying a, a nice day where I don't feel, like, apprehension that something could happen around every corner. Uh, so that, that'll be good. But I got to be honest, I in this business, you'd always rather be busy than sort of just, like, waiting and so I I have appreciated this uh, this month for sure because it has flown by with tracking everything going on. And then, of course, the, the big announcement yesterday kind of made everything worth it. And so that'll be a lot of fun. You've covered this beat for, for the Huskers for a number of years now. How big of an earthquake-type move is Dylan's announcement yesterday? Yeah, I mean, he's the single highest-rated commit that I have ever covered Nebraska uh, receiving. And then on top of it, I mean, he's about as high of a rated guy as, you know, internet recruiting history suggests Nebraska has signed. So he's currently the number two player in the country by 24-7 sports. Uh, we'll see if he's able to stay there by the end of the of the rankings. I don't look for him to move too far one way or the other. He obviously doesn't have a whole lot to go to be number one and uh, would be just uh, if he were to move down. I think it's just a handful of people that, that would move in front of him. But it's a huge, huge pickup for Nebraska. And then, of course, it's at the, the game's premier position on top of it. And then... Then you throw in the legacy aspect and, and Dominic Raiola's, uh, Raiola's involvement back in uh, with this program. And there's just a lot of uh, reason to be excited about what this means for Matt Rule and his staff as they try to build and, and build off of, you know, good momentum last year, but they're looking for better results. What do you think swung it to Nebraska? Do you think it was kind of because of his dad? Do you think his heart was kind of here? What do you think made the difference in the end? Honestly, I think Nebraska's un, uh, you know, they, they basically had a very clear path to playing time at quarterback. I mean, there's just unresolved issues for them in the quarterback room. Uh, no incumbent starter that you necessarily would just look at, uh, whether it be Heinrich Harburg or Chubba Purdy, and just assume that guy has a job. And I think Dylan Rayola was looking for somewhere to, to, to be able to go play and to play potentially – uh, right away. And I think Nebraska affords him that opportunity to come in this spring, compete for playing time with, with whomever Nebraska has in that room, whether it is Heinrich, whether it is Chubba, whether it is a transfer quarterback that the Huskers go out and get. I think that Dylan and his dad looked at Nebraska's situation. They looked at Georgia's situation and they just felt we'd be able to play. We're very comfortable with that place. I mean, you think about it. He has been here more than almost any other recruit that doesn't just live in the state. And so he just knows everything there is to know about Nebraska football. And here's a job opportunity. And I think they really like Matt Rule. It all just kind of lined up perfectly for Nebraska. But the single, the single biggest factor to me is the clear path that there was to potentially playing and potentially starting as a true freshman quarterback. You mentioned in-state guys. Daniel Kalen is an in-state guy. He he waffled a bit last week when news was leaking out that this might happen. Ended up canceling the visit to Michigan State. Have you had any contact with Daniel in the last couple of days? No, I have, have kind of just let him have his space uh, a little bit. I mean, I it's a, a big deal uh, when this all sort of went down. I mean, you think about these two quarterbacks have sort of been linked together going all the way back to 2021. To wherever it felt like there was some momentum where Daniel would be the quarterback in Nebraska's class, then sort of Dylan would reemerge. And we saw that last December. And, you know, there's there's no other way to put this. You had to see what was going to happen with, with Dylan Riola before you made a decision about Daniel Kalen. That's what Nebraska did in the spring. And then when Dylan became an option again, Daniel had to consider if he wanted to to stick with his commitment to Nebraska. And ultimately he did. And I think the coaching staff did a nice job expressing interest. I mean, I haven't had direct contact with him, but I have checked with other people and it does seem like Nebraska certainly did a nice job of, of making him feel like he was still wanted, that he still has a lot of value to the future of this program. And I, I think we, we don't know what the future holds and you have two elite 11 quarterbacks. You know, you can't just say that Daniel Kalen will never have a chance at Nebraska. And so I, I think after thinking it over and just how little time there is left in this cycle as an early enrollee, the best option for him was to push his cards forward with Nebraska and see where things go. Busy with Mike Schaefer of 24-7 Sports here on Sports Night. All right, Schaefer, put the quarterbacks aside. Where, where do you see strength in this class? What positions have your attention? Well, I think they've done a nice job with the offensive line. I mean, whether it's Grant Bricks, 
uh, who they pulled in here at the end of November, at the very end of the season, pulling away from Oklahoma and Kansas State, whether it was going out in the summer and getting Preston Taumua, who was uh, basically locked up by Oregon. And the visit that he had with Nebraska just completely blew him away. And his experience with that staff made him really excited. Whether it was having Jake Peters in camp, putting him up against your best defensive lineman in camp, and then deciding, let's go ahead and make an offer to this guy over in Iowa that could be a center of the future for Nebraska. Landon Davidson, same thing out of Colorado. Gibson Pyle is going to be playing in the Army All-American Bowl down in San Antonio uh, later this month, along with um, you know Grant Bricks and, and several other guys in this class. So I think on the offensive line, and then Xander Ruggeroli, who they are effectively putting on an NIL scholarship uh, to be part of this class as well from Bishop Gorman. I just feel like they, they have several guys on the offensive line that are intriguing developmental types. They have guys like Grant Bricks where they feel like have really, really high upside and, and Preston Taumua. And we know so much of what they were able to accomplish in their first cycle was done on the defensive side of the line. This will be great for the trenches too, to, to bring in this many bodies. And I think some guys that could play pretty early in their career, as you sort of see the Bryce Ben Hart's and Ben Scott's and those guys start to move on, you want to be able to replace them and, and get these guys in the system and get them up to speed. So when they start competing for jobs in 2025 and 2026, they're ready to go. We, we mentioned Dylan, a legacy player. There are a lot of legacy guys in this class, right? I mean, uh, yeah, and they're and they're legit. All of them seem to be legit guys to be putting in your program. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's just you know, Nebraska has a storied history of college football players that have come through here and had a lot of success, and you know, they're just at that age now where their their sons are are starting to you know, finish their high school careers or, or in the portal or what have you and are looking for opportunities. And, you know, whether it's a guy like Caleb Benning, who we know of because he's local and he's won a couple state titles here with Omaha Westside and, and his great performances in those state title games, whether it's uh, Camden Cook, who's going to come in with an opportunity to uh, to try to, you know, really elevate Nebraska's special teams play from the punting game uh, behind Brian Buscini, and when he gets his chance to sort of step into the limelight and help Nebraska move forward uh, with their special teams, or even a Keelan Smith, you know, the son of Neil Smith, uh, outstanding season for him over in uh, Liberty, a, a suburb of Kansas City. I mean, I, I don't know that he will get enough credit for how well he has played uh, this year. I, I think he's one of those guys who maybe falls between the cracks for some recruiting evaluators. But he has NFL family lineage, and he absolutely lit up high school football down in Missouri. I think this is a guy that fans could be really, really excited about in Keelan Smith. And so there's, a, like I said, a whole host of, of different types of, of players and different legacies, all at different positions, and a lot of them playing different positions than their father. So uh, that's kind of fun on top of it, too. Yeah, not following your ride, not not following right exactly in your footsteps. That's really interesting to, to go down that avenue. Okay, a couple of areas. Only one defensive lineman in this class and no running backs. Now, this is signing day one. There's another one still in February. I know not many people do that. Do you think Nebraska still tries to find a body or two for those two spots? We will we'll see kind of how it plays out at running back. It, it might be a thing where they look into the portal more than they would look for a high school running back. I know they like Emmett Johnson a lot. They like what uh, Quentin Ives could potentially be. He's going to be in the mix here this spring more than he was in the fall uh, now that he finished up a redshirt freshman year. And then, of course, you have Gabe Irvin and Ramir Johnson coming back from injury. So I, I would look for them to, to probably look for a veteran running back if they could out of the portal. That'll be something that, you know, the, the thing with the portal guys is there's no signing day for them. I mean, if they if if they come to an agreement with a running back on Christmas Day, uh, he can go ahead and announce and then just enroll in January. And that's that. So the the high school end of things, I don't really know what to expect, Greg. I, I just think there's there's finite amount of spots even available, and I would imagine that those that are still available are going to be utilized by transfer portal players more than the high school guys. I mean, they're going to take uh, a large number of high school recruits here this cycle, and they have to make it all work inside their scholarship limit of 85. And, you know, I mentioned there's going to be some guys that are on NIL scholarships, but I just don't think there's going to be a lot of spot or spaces left for, for people that want to make decisions uh, in 
January and then sign in February. I think Nebraska is just going to be moving on to the portal and moving on to 2025. Visiting again with Mike Schaefer, 24-7 Sports, signing day tomorrow. Full coverage here on our YouTube channel beginning at 7 a.m. Schaefer, uh, they went to South Florida a bunch in this class. What do you make of that? And how about that batch they're bringing up from, from the Miami area? Yeah, look, I mean, every coaching staff that I've covered has had a, a strong affinity in their heart to try to go down into Florida and, and find players with that sort of dynamic Florida speed and bring them up to Lincoln and, and see how it goes. And you've had some success, right? Like DiCaprio Boodle, multi-year starter. You've had some other guys that have been pretty good players for you from, from Florida and from South Florida. But a lot of times, you know, it's, it's difficult. Uh, Scott Frost had that haul you know, right before COVID hit and those guys got here and their whole world blew up just yeah. like everyone else's did in 2020. And it, you know, when you're a freshman and you're that far away from home and the culture shock of Florida to Nebraska, it's always a little bit difficult. But the thing that this staff has going for them um, is a number of guys from South Florida. And then someone like Philip Simpson, who was a former high school coach down there, who's a, a on staff, you know, in like a um, quality control type role uh, for the Huskers. He's a guy that I think has a lot of connections down in Florida. And you throw in players like Willis McGahee, the fourth and Ja'Cory Barney, and they just have a lot of clout down there. And so you see some of these other defensive backs, you know, and Amari Sanders is making a decision tomorrow. Larry Tarver is making a decision tomorrow. And Will uh, Vincent Shavers is making a decision tomorrow. So Nebraska could end up, if, if they just get all of those guys, they could end up with five players from Miami alone or the Miami area. And I think some of that has to do with what Willis McGahee and Ja'Cory Barney have been saying about the staff. And and like I said, Philip Simpson is a, a name to know. Uh, Nebraska is certainly going to utilize the fact that he was a pretty successful high school coach down there. Uh, even if he's not able to get on the road, he's pretty well connected to a number of recruits in the area. Good stuff. All right. Um, wh where does 24-7 have Nebraska's class? I know it's been top 25, but with Riola coming on board, are, can they finish in the top 20? Uh, I don't know. So there's obviously 24-7 Sports has two sets of rankings. They have their own rankings, the 24-7 Sports rankings. I think it'd be pretty hard for Nebraska to get into the top 20 there. Now, the composite rankings, which takes in the uh, the rankings from all the recruiting services, I believe last check, Nebraska is at 19. So they are just inside the top 20 there. I think if they were to add those above players that I mentioned, they're going to finish right around 21, 22, depending on how everyone else does. But another nice class. You know, and that's just what uh, I think Nebraska has the capability to recruit in the top 25 year in and year out. What I'm looking to see is if there is a staff that is able to put things together where you can get a top 15 class. And then dare I say it, Greg, if you could ever put together a top 10 class, things could be really interesting around here from a, ta a talent perspective. But getting Dylan Riola was a big start, and I think it's going to help jump kick things a little bit for 2025 where Nebraska already has four commitments. Good stuff. Shape, we appreciate it. Uh, take care, and everybody follow Shafe. He's a great follow on, on social media, and that site does a wonderful job of covering Husker Athletics. Shafe, we appreciate it. Happy holidays. You as well. Thanks for having me on, and enjoy signing day. There's Mike Schaefer, 24-7 Sports, joining us here on Sports Honor. He joined us on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. Woodhouse your auto is your auto-trusted partner. 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at Woodhouse. Dot com. Our phone lines, text lines are open, 402-413-2400. Jessica rejoins me next. Go forward for your next truck or SUV and find an easier way to buy with Woodhouse Ford today and experience the convenience of buying with Woodhouse Ford. Save up to $13,000 off MSRP on a 2023 Ford F-150 XLT plus 3.9% APR for 60 months. With approved credit, $299 dock fee to its signing. Security deposit waive expires 1-02-2024. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Cow chip throwing. Or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Love is all around during the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event. By the end of this, our 16th year, 
Subaru and retailers like us will have donated over $285 million to charities such as the ASPCA, Make-A-Wish, Mills on Wheels America, and the National Park Foundation. Beardmore Subaru is proud to support Sarpy County Housing Authority during the Subaru Share the Love event. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or online at BeardmoreSubaru.com for more details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Thoughts. Dear roads, trails, and rivers, you ready for some SUV action? Toyota SUVs can roll their sleeves up for tight turns and twisty trails, dress up for a night out on the town, or head to the great outdoors. Take your family adventure game to a whole new level with the roomy Highlander. Make a serious splash with the rugged, revved up RAV4. And to all your toys in the spacious new Sequoia. Don't forget the Trail Taman 4Runner and the sleek Venza Hybrid. All Toyota SUVs feature a whole suite of creature comforts to keep you and yours cozy in the cabin. Check out this legendary lineup at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. See your Omaha Metro and Lincoln Toyota dealers. Corwin Toyota of Bellevue, Village Point Toyota of Omaha, Baxter Toyota of La Vista, or Baxter Toyota of Lincoln. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride. The official foundation company of the Huskers. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. It's time to light up the season during the Make the Holidays Bright sales event. Get our best offers and choose from a huge selection of Ford F-150 trucks with the capability, convenience, and technology to help bring us together. Discover how Ford F-150 can make the holidays bright. Now, get a new 2023 Ford F-150 with 2.9% financing for 72 months. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. We're back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Tuesday night on the eve of National Signing Day tomorrow for college football players across the country. Exciting time, you know, and our, our colleague Damon Benning, his son Caleb is going to be signing tomorrow. I hope they enjoy the heck out of the day. Yeah, and I think it's a huge relief too when this day gets here and to be able to get to celebrate, you know, is, even though they've been committed, they a lot of them have been posting about they're going to have signing day ceremonies in front of their schools and it's you know, just a special day to really um, celebrate the hard work that's gone into being able to sign this letter of intent with the Power 5 football program. A lot of them, their lifelong dream to be a Husker. There are so many Nebraska kids and legacies that have ties to this program that it means a great deal for them to get to wear the end. And so it's a special day, but it's also kind of the end of a, a long journey that it, to get here. And for a lot of them, they're going to be coming in January, so it's just kind of the culmination of a high school career. So, yeah, it's a special day, and uh, I know, um, you know, for a lot of families, it's a really, really important, big, special day to get to, to celebrate together. Should be a wonderful day in the life of these, these young men. 7 a.m., our coverage on our YouTube channel will have 
Uh, video of these incoming players. We'll hear from a couple of them. We'll hear from the coaches about these players. So looking for the, for a great coverage tomorrow starting at 7 a.m. Brett in Columbus on our text line. I was just wondering if you guys heard anything about Casey Thompson coming back to play for Nebraska next year. There seems to be some smoke out there. I think Casey was in town a week or so ago. There was a picture of him in town. I don't know. I've not heard anything. I, 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 I would be surprised. I mean, he, I know he got hurt early this season at FAU. He could probably apply for a hardship, kind of what, what Marcus Washington is doing. But I guess I never should never say never. And I do know that he wants to coach. And so that might play into a decision. He, he's got a lot of great relationships with a lot of guys that are, that he was teammates with. I, uh, chatted with Emmett Johnson, and he he said that he's still really close with him, still communicates with him, Gabe, Gabe Irvin Gabe, as well. Mm -hmm. So I think he's got some teammates here. Casey loved Lincoln, so maybe he was coming back to visit. You never know. Um, so there's maybe a lot that that goes into that and why he was here. And I know that, you know, having a, a veteran quarterback like that, whether he's playing or just kind of in the room, if he is going to be a student, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I've reached out. We'll see. But I, I'm not, I just, I don't know what the eligibility is. Yeah. I don't know what that process looks like. And maybe it was just as simple as, he was visiting to come up here to see some of the, his buddies that he played with and, and to spend some time in Lincoln. I was around some of the coaches today. They said nothing about that. That doesn't mean necessarily everything, but again, I, we'll, we'll put our head to So, Brett, you're not the only one that's, that's been hearing that. Uh, Tim in Norfolk says, does the volleyball team get to a certain percentage over the scholarship limit like football, if not why? Well, everybody gets the 58 90 pay above your scholarship you get that that's a given every athlete gets that even walk-ons get the 5890 that's something trev put into play a couple years ago so they all get the same thing now nil deals are different and i will tell you our, our volleyball team i think does pretty well with nil i think they're they're probably the most uh, propped up group in the country in that sport yeah and for probably an entire team of women's sports like they're probably are very few women's teams from top to bottom yes. that have as much NIL support now, as like Caitlin Clark would be at a different yeah level. but as far as like an entire roster yes. of a team at Iowa I don't know how that can I doubt it compares even no. LSU probably has some money and mm -hmm. behind it and yeah probably has quite a bit of NIL support but I don't know if there's very many women I know OU softball has a ton of NIL, NIL yeah. support so there are a handful of programs maybe 10 yes Women's say, teams that have the kind of support. Nebraska volleyball is in that, uh, uh, really across all women's sports. And Lexi's got that Panina, Panini deal that she's part of. It's a clothing line or something. She's part of that. Nicklin had it a year ago. Nicklin was, was, was it Adidas with Nicklin? Yeah, she, did, she was part of the first Adidas deal. Right. And now Lexi's got this Panina deal that has been renewed for her. So she's probably a step above some of her teammates. But all athletes here get the same for scholarship and then the 5890 on top of that. So hopefully that, uh, Tim, hopefully that answers your question there. 402-413-2400. We're back to wrap up tonight's show next. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ, Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Both farmers and Division I athletes are alike in that every year, every season presents a new opportunity. That is nothing new. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, embrace new opportunities. They focus on their roots and continue to stand strong with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperatives relies on their value of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. When you choose Aurora Cooperative, you're choosing a winning team that's dedicated to the success of our local farmers. Go Big Red and Go Aurora Cooperative. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. When you're clocking out and happy hours already started. But you're clocking out and happy hours already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Woodhouse Auto Family, your trusted auto partner, 20 brands, 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Last night we did weekend winners, and I told you guys during the break, I go, gosh, I had one, and I couldn't, I didn't write it down. I couldn't remember it, so I went down a different path. I meant to say Mickey Joseph. Mickey's been named the new head football coach at Gramble University, a very prestigious uh, college down in the state of Louisiana, which Mickey's very, very familiar with. I think he'll be fantastic there. I'm really happy for Mickey. Yeah, good for him. And, you know, you saw how guys bought in to play in for him. And I know Coach Rule gave him a lot of praise for how they, they fought at the end. And so, uh, you know, he's he's great motivator, great recruiter, obviously. He's been proven and, and great developer of talent, as we've also seen putting guys in the NFL. So uh, great for Grambling. And I uh, can't wait to see how, how that unfolds there, at Grambling for Mickey Joseph. Good for Mickey. So congratulations to Mickey Joseph. Also, Eric Chenander elevated to defensive coordinator at Boise State. They went through a coaching change. They made a change midseason. The interim guy led them to the Mountain West Championship. They got beat the other night by UCLA in the bowl game. And then they have promoted the interim guy to the head coaching job. He got So he interim to the full-time guy. And Chins is now his new D.C. Loved Eric Chenander. Yeah. Wish nothing but the best for him as well. He was such a kind person, was so gracious. Um, and, you know, Jeremiah thought the world of him too. Yeah. And I think everybody did Salt around of here. The earth guy. Yeah, Just he really is. Come in and such a great human being. So happy for him and his family to, to get that opportunity. Yeah. So a couple good little positive notes there. No show tomorrow. Basketball. We got it all over the place tomorrow. Both the men and women play. The women will be down in Lawrence at. Um, Allen Fieldhouse to take on the Jayhawks. Final non-conference game for Amy Williams' team. They are 9-2 and two on the year. The men are also 9-2. and two. They'll play North Dakota. You are on the call on BTM Plus tomorrow night against the Hawks. you got a busy day tomorrow. Yeah. It's been busy two yeah, weeks. Yeah, it has. But Tampa was fun, right? Tampa was I mean, fun. To be a part of that, I know it was crushing Sunday. That was cool. Yeah. No, it was fun. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it's been... This crossover season has still continued for us here at HRN. And so, you know, adding signing day, even though football, the season was over, this is a huge day. It's a big day for the program. It it's is. a really important class to the staff. And so getting to welcome in that class, we're, we're going to get to do a lot of fun things. It's going to be a great show. So make sure you tune in. We've got, you, you talk to coaches breaking down a lot of these guys. Um, I will be talking to a lot of the recruits. They're great. Uh, Oscar fans are going to love them. So it's going to be a fun day, a fun show. And so we'll, we'll do football in the morning and we'll do hoops tomorrow night. Big, big game for both Amy Williams and Fred Hoiberg's yep. Huskers. Huskers uh, traveled down to Lawrence earlier today. They're down there. Matt Cody and Jeff Grease will have that on some of these Husker affiliates. And then the men's game with Kent and Jake tomorrow night from PBA. I'm going to go. I'm going to go sit in the stands, get a popcorn. Might have me a lemonade and enjoy the game. Nice. Good for you. It's a fun atmosphere. Do they serve lemonade? I think so. Camden, do they serve lemonade at PBA? Uh, they probably have different types of lemonade you can okay. explore. But it's a fun, it's been, I went the other day with Creighton as a fan. It's a fun atmosphere, you know, and this, this fan base has got behind this team and both teams really. So it's fun to go to PBA. Both nine and two. Camden, thanks for hanging with us tonight. Thanks to all of you for being a part of the program tonight. We'll be back with you on Thursday. Enjoy the basketball tomorrow night. Our coverage of National Signing Day on our YouTube channel. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Welcome to Sue's Frame Shop. Yes, can you frame these, please? Um, these are Nebraska Lottery Holiday Classic Scratch Tickets. I know. Isn't the classic Christmas artwork on them just charming? Now, be sure not to smudge it when you frame them. But if you scratch them and enter non-winning tickets online, you could win up to $20,000. Give me those. Here's a quarter. Let's start scratching. Promotion ends January 3rd, 2024. Top prize odds vary by game. Farming today is a combination of hard work, innovation, and partnerships to help keep us moving forward. Sap Brothers Petroleum has provided us with fuel, propane, and lubricants on the farm for many years. For over 52 years, Sap Brothers has been a reliable partner to thousands of farmers across our great state. We work hard to make sure our customers have the most reliable supply, provided in the safest manner and at the most competitive price. Trust Sap Brothers Petroleum to protect your equipment and keep your farm fueled. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics and to serve Nebraska farmers and Husker fans across America's heartland. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. 